Hello, Bible Beauties. Thank you for waiting four minutes and 54 seconds, almost five minutes. I apologize for the delay. Um, hubby stopped by and I had to help. And y'all know I'm just always doing nine million things anyway, because as I shared last week for our live, we had our special guest, only lady, the Miss Vidalia. I, um, I shared with you then that she and I meet every Friday at 10, just as accountability. You need those women in your life just as someone you can, um, as a sounding board for you. I'm all about community, connection, um, friendship, sisterhood. So sorry again that I am late. Thank you. Thank you. As you come into the room, please go ahead, like, share out with someone, invite them to this live. Say, hey, take your lunch right now. Let's get on the live. Let's talk. Let's hang out together. That's one of the things I love about virtual spaces. Um, even thinking about church, it's like I don't live in the same city or state as my mom, but I get to go to church with her every week because we both stream into Mount Zion. And I see her in the comments. She sees me in the comments. It's like sitting next to her on the pew. So hopefully you feel the same sense of community here in the in the chat in our Faith Field Friday conversation. So um, I'm going to get some housekeeping stuff out of the way. I'm going to get some time for more ladies to join as um, if you're watching the replay, hello, lovely. Sorry to waste your life, um, especially if you're new here. Hopefully you can fast forward to where we start the conversation on what God has said during the three-day water fast that we are just coming off of. Hello, Cora, Cora. I got your email. I was trying to email myself the notes and saw your email and I was skimming through and I was like, ah, I'm about to be late for the live. Let me... Uh, but, you know, I can become so immersed in your divinely anointed messages. Um, so I'm going to respond um, after the live for sure. So happy to see you in the chat. I'm, I'm just so excited for how God is moving in your life, sis. Period. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, all right. But we are talking about what God said during the fast. This is what he said to me. But I believe, as I shared on Instagram, that he has a word for you and that that is applicable to your life. And God is so good. He's just so divine, so amazing, because we actually just a couple of weeks ago had a live on this very topic. But God reiterated that thing over these three days and gave me some fresh revelation that I'm excited to share with you, which I will do shortly. I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm going to get us set up on TikTok Live. If you're not following me there, um, you can do that. Everything is just at Yasmin underscore Williams Woods, whether that be ice, ice cream. Mm, I don't even, I, I'm not wanting ice cream, am I? Whether that be on Instagram or TikTok. Let me take a sip of water, y'all. Forgive me. This is the most energy I've had since Sunday, minus a few little praise breaks where I was like, yes, Jesus, come on in. So the fact that my energy has been restored means that we probably about to get all of it on the live today. And I apologize in advance. Um, I'm going to set us up and then we are going to go to God in prayer. If you have any prayer requests, definitely drop them in the chat no, and I will open up with those. Um, I got to remember to cover the women in mothership who gave some prayer requests last night. I need to cover the women who were on the end of fast call either yesterday morning or um, either, ye either yesterday morning or um, last night. Last night was such a blessing. Yesterday morning was too, but I tell you the difference. Yesterday morning was a group of women whom, um, who are either in Bible study with me, who are just always in the comments, who with whom I've developed a great friendship and relationship, sisterhood with. But last night, man, was so powerful because it was amazing women of God. But it was so evident that it was also Holy Spirit in that thing, in that room, in that place. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm trying to do TikTok better um, with these lives. All right. Woo. OMG, y'all. OMG. All right. 
All right, hi TikTok family. We are about to go to go to God in prayer. Hello, hello, dear graceful God, dear loving, kind, mighty God. I want to thank you for your women. I want to thank you for your daughters. I want to thank you that we get to that we get to live lives that glorify your kingdom. I thank you for your righteousness. Father God, it just blows my mind that you took everything that was wrong about me and gave me your righteousness. Thank you, Father God. I praise you. And during our live today, I just ask that Holy Spirit is present in this place. God, you have spoken over these last three days. You are speaking even now. And God, I am just praying for fresh anointing. I am praying to be able to speak in a way where I don't muddy your message, where I don't misconstrue anything that you have communicated to me through this fast. Father God, I just pray right now, none of me, all of you have your way. We ask that the Holy Spirit just flows throughout this conversation and that even now you are calling your daughters, that you are um, sharing this live with them, that you are leading them to log on and to tune in, Father God, or to watch the replay. I just want you to be glorified and to have your way during this time together. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray, amen, amen, amen. Hello, ladies. So um, I know that we did some housekeeping stuff earlier on, but let me just say, if you are watching the replay, if you are new here, um, I am Yasmin Williams-Woods. Every single week, I make videos to help women conquer life and everything it throws at them by leveraging the courageous love of Jesus. Y'all, I am so passionate about that, about that call, about that mission. I am on a warlike mission to make sure that I am sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with women in a way that is tangible, in a way that is concrete, in a way that is actionable, because y'all, we're more than conquerors. So we, you've heard me say it before, we, not only can we conquer everything on this side of heaven, we can conquer life, um, but we can do more than that. Our, our God conquered death. So, of course, you can get through that problem. Of course, you can get through the heartbreak. Of course, you can get through the loneliness. Of course, you can get through the self-doubt. You can get through it because we can conquer life as long as we leverage the courageous love of Jesus, period. Hello, Dynasty. Um, yes, glory to God. I will definitely be praying for that. Yes, 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 yes. Um, covering you. And I, I get that, you know, my son is in college and there are all the things in addition to what you share, there's just always something, um, for us as parents of college students. So I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you sis. I got your friends. So I said that we are going to talk about, and I'm looking around cause I'm like, where's my notebook? Where's my notes? I sent myself the, some of the notes I typed out, but I ended up writing some out too. Um, and I didn't bring my notebook over here, so, but so we just gonna Holy Spirit, that's you. That means we are fully dependent on you because we don't even have some of the notes that you gave me. But that means you are going to speak in this place in the name of Jesus, I declare. But as you saw on the thumbnail or on the um, title of this video, God spoke during the fast. So I am just going to share with you how he spoke. Now, what you can expect is that I did I did vlog in some ways the journey of the fast. And um, I did that because, so you will also see that. And I won't share everything that I share in that video because that's real in the moment of like, <laughs> and I think it's important for, and I don't even have a voice. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. The enemy didn't want me to get that breakthrough. The enemy doesn't want you to get the word that God has for your life, but he is a lie. He is such a lie. Um, but um because it's important for me to share it because I watched, like I read articles I from, you know, from the doctors, from the experts, from the scientists, you know, I checked in with people who fasted in this way before I watched the videos. And I promise you that none of it prepared me for what I encountered, for what I endured, for the burden that was on me, the heaviness, the difficulty, the struggle of this fast. And so I just want to share transparently with you all. So I don't know when the fast or when the vlog will come out, but know that you'll expect that. What I'm going to share in this live is specifically the word that God gave me. Um, hello, if you're on TikTok, that God gave me during the fast. Let me catch up on comments. 
And then I'm just going to tell you how, how we did this thing. Hello, Delissa. No words at all. We are just now getting started. Hi, Kendall, my love. So happy that you are here. Oh, glory to God. Thank you so much for putting that in the chat. Yes, please, please, please. It's it's being a, a digital disciple because when you engage with the video in those ways, it um, puts it in the algorithm and uh, and shares it out with other women so that they can get the word. But here's what I was just speaking after watching a friend's video and also after talking with Vidalia a second ago is like, the algorithm doesn't apply to all the content creators in the chat. Know that the algorithm doesn't apply to you. And if you are not a content creator, know that the rules, know that the el eligibility requirements, know that the loan requirements, know that whatever it is, it doesn't apply to you because you are a kingdom kid period. And God can open doors that no man can shut. God can do what your credentials can't do. God can do what your work, what your faith, what your skills, what your talents can't do. So yes, 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 yes. We're going to be digital, digital disciples and, um, and sharing this message so that other women can be blessed by it. But if you are in a space and you are counting on something to grow so that you can open, so a door will be open or whatever it is, know that that, them rules don't even apply to you because you are a kingdom kid. Um, oh, it seems like every time I fast, something bad happens in my life. I'm so discouraged asking for a prayer. Sis, that is in part why I am sharing, why I share transparently in January that I didn't even try to fast. And that's also why I'm going to share the vlog because that that was me. But that is just, you know, one of the women on on in mothership had a similar experience the last night of the fast. It's like, but God, I'm fasting. So why is this happening? And the reason it's happening is because you're fasting. And when God is moving, the devil is mad and he's mad. It is let it be affirmation. So I'm going to pray for you. And I'm so sorry that 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 is your experience. I can relate. And I'm sick and tired of the devil being in my business, being down my throat, attacking me in my family, in my home, in my finances, in my business, in my calling, in my purpose. And I rebuke him off every single area of your life, sis. And I know that what you're saying is hard. I know I get it. Um, so I don't, I am validating that. But I also want you to know that it is confirmation that God is working in your life. It is confirmation that God is going to see you through. It is confirmation that his deliverance is on the other, um, it's on the other side of whatever you are going through. And I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus, but he's big mad. Kendall, you are a mighty woman of God. Thank you so very much. Um, glory to God for you, sis. Glory, glory, glory. And even now, you know, God is providing. He is making ways for, for you. When we take care of God's children, you better believe he's going to take care of you. He's going to prosper you. He's going to pour into you, y'all. As women of God, that's what we're called to do. We're called to plant seeds. We're called to water seeds that's all, that have already been planted. We're we're called to thrive. We're called to be fruitful and multiply. So it's like I'm bearing fruit. Let me let me put fruit. I mean, let me put seed. Let me sow seed. Let me water the fruit that God is going to produce in your life too. So when you do that, you better know that God is going to multiply that thing. So I declare right now in the name of Jesus that he is providing for you in ways that you haven't even asked about or thought about. I'm so grateful for you, woman of God, women of God. Hello, Jasmine. Yes, 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 girl, because I don't even know how TikTok works. I just try to go. I'm on here, so I try to go on there because um, TikTok is um, TikTok is TikToking in that it is it is growing. So I try to um, just be present over there, but I don't even know how to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm so sorry, Lena, but I am praying for you. I am definitely praying. All right. So the thing is, what God said, and Kendall knows this. God said it six times and I feel some type of way that he said, I felt some type of way initially that he even said it, but 
What God said is his grace is sufficient. And I know we know, we know, like I get it, which is why I was mad. I was like, God, I, I know this, like, but that's not why I'm fasting. That's not what I want to hear. And like, no, 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 no. Um, you know, I want a breakthrough. I want a miracle. I want signs. I want wonders. But his grace is a miracle. His, his grace is the gospel. His grace is literally the gospel. Because as we talked about two weeks ago, when we talked about your grace for, we talked about grace is God's richness at Christ's expense. So that is, I mean, like that's richness, that's breakthrough, that's miracle, that's signs, that wonder, that's, that's love, that's compassion, that's salvation, that's redemption, that's deliverance, that's holiness, that's righteousness over your life. So when God is saying his grace is sufficient, there's so much more in it, which I am going to hopefully be able to break down during our time together. Um, I had never done one, Victoria. Victoria! Oh my gosh, I'm so grateful to God that you connected. And I saw your message on the last day of the fast um, in the comments because we actually, we had emails every day and then we had some end of fast calls um, yesterday where we talked about how God had moved. So I would love to connect with you. If you can email me yas at yasminwilliamswoods.com. I'd love to hop on a call and just pray with you and touch and agree with you, stand in agreement um, as God moves in your life. I would love to hear even hear how, how it went for you. The devil wants you to be scared to go for it. Wow. Yes, he does. To increase your closeness with Jesus. Yes, of course. Of course, an obstacle is going to come. Of course, an attack is going to come. The devil isn't just going to freely let us draw close to God. Absolutely not. And so, um, yes, that is a word for all of us. I think it's specifically to, to Lena. The devil is bullying you to not be strong and conquer him, period. But he done lost. He is a line loser. A line loser. He already done lost and he's still out here playing. Like, wh why are you wasting your time, sir? Sir, it's not how this works. It's not how any of it works. We are victorious in the name of Jesus. So let me... Um, as I pull up my notes, I'm going to I'm going to share you share with you how God gave this word. And because God's like grace, grace, grace. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Like I just talked about it two weeks ago. We've been down this line, we've been down this road. I get it. He's like, no, you don't get it. So what and I don't and I I won't fully get it until Christ Jesus come on back and get you, girl. So I um you know, I just, I went digging because I want to understand. You're saying grace, grace, grace. I want to understand. I was able to find an article, which I'll eventually put in the description box to talk about the four kinds of grace. So I am going to, um, I'm going to share that with you in a little bit. Hello to everybody who's on the live. I am so grateful to see y'all here, all my TikTok family. Please know that I am live right now on YouTube where I go live every Friday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. My direction is going to be over here because this is my faith field family right here. This is my faith family. So we are, um, if you want to join us over on YouTube, please do. But if you want to stay here and get this word, we're talking about grace, then yes, I believe God has something for you. Just know that, my face is primarily going to be this way, and um, but it ain't even about what you're seeing. It's about what you're hearing, okay? The word of God, all right? Um, but so I was able to um, find an article that talks about the four kinds of grace. So we're going to get into that because I'm like, God, if you're saying grace, if you're saying grace, then you will have to make this thing a little bit deeper for me. You'll have to make this thing a little more clear for me. You're going to have to make this thing a little more intense for me because this fast that I'm on is intense. And I'm expecting a mighty move of God. So I want to understand this in mighty ways. Um, I love that we are all, yes, fellowship and community in the chat. I'm so here for it. You are totally fine. Yes, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, peace that transcends understanding. All right, so y'all, Sunday before the fast, I'm watching. Um, I'm streaming in at Mount Zion Baptist Church right on in Nashville, Tennessee. And the anchor scripture was 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Now, people, y'all going to have to hear a little testimony for a second. Now, people often say, 
even when I lived in Nashville, we're like, why do you still go to that church? They have issues with our church. It's a mega church and all the things. And it's predominantly black. And, you know, the kingdom is reflective of all of God's people, his riches and the various colors and languages and cultures and all that traditions. I get it. But I got my reasons as to why, um, why culturally I chose that church. And maybe I'll share it in another, in another live, another reason. Happy Black History Month to everybody out there. Um, let me just say it quickly here. We predominantly operate in, we primarily operate in predominantly white spaces, whether it be work, whether it be, um, you know, our, our neighborhood or just, you know, when we go out, you know, when you go out to restaurants or wherever you go, like everybody's white. So no, 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 no. On Sunday, all my kids, teachers were white. The devil's a lot. So on Sundays, I wanted a space and Wednesdays and whenever we went, a space where my kids could be a firm, where they could see people who look like them, where they know that like, no, Jesus is not reserved to one race um, in this situation. He's not reserved to just white women and white men. He like, no, there are people who look like you who are sold out for God too. So um, don't come at people for being at their various churches. God has them there for a reason. And also the people will ask, why do I still stream into that church? If I'm looking for community here, why haven't I found a church here? I will. And I am. Um, as soon as God tells me to, but he hasn't at this point. And there is no doubt in my mind that Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III is my shepherd. And this week further, every week is just confirmation that he is indeed my shepherd. So, um, or the shepherd of my family, you know, my, you know, all the legal things or the religious ways to put that. But, um, so on Sunday, his anchor scripture was 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. This is where Paul asked God to remove the thorn from his side three times. And God's like, nah, what I'm not going to do is do that. But what I will do is perfect my strength in the places where you're weak. Paul is like, okay, let me boast all the more about it. We know it. Got it. So I'm listening to the sermon, but I'm really not caring because I'm like, and I'm just being transparent with y'all. I'm like, okay, because I'm about to go into a fast and... I am at church expecting the word to be directly in line with my fast. God, talk to me today about blessings, breakthroughs, miracle signs, and one's clarity, um, seeing your face, being in your presence, walking in your purposes, being in alignment with you. Like, that's what I'm trying to hear because that's what I'm about to embark upon. However, no, the title of the message was, um, he knew you needed it. And the scripture well, as I said, it was 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Okay, cool. I took my little notes. It is what it is. So on Monday, day one of the fast, so sorry if you've heard me say some of this. On Monday, I listened to a, I was listening to a sermon from Mike Todd. Now, I had started that sermon the previous week. I just never finished it. So I'm in there, I'm doing my little praise and worship. You know, I'm fasting. I'm out here in these streets. And I turned the sermon on at the point where I left off. I kid you not, Michael Ty is talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. Now, I listened to at least, y'all know, sermons be 150 minutes. I listened to at least an hour and a half of it already, if not more. So it's only a little bit left. This sermon was not about that. But here we are, here we are, and this is the scripture. So, you know, my spirit is awakened, and I'm like, okay, God, you might be saying something. If you're saying it, I still don't like that you're saying it, but I hear you. And I'm going to tell I didn't like that he was saying grace, 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 because we don't fully understand what grace means until we about to get some more clarity today. So um, fast fastly here for these other examples again it came up six times listening to a friend's podcast i was supposed to listen to this podcast two three weeks ago when she relaunched her podcast but i just you know life happens i hang on to it and so in moment of weakness i'm like well let me you know let me catch up on her podcast y'all i turn her podcast on and her podcast is called constant surrender you'll see it in the blog for the fast and um she gets to the end of the of the podcast and she talks about 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're not playing. Then, I don't know if y'all remember, I said this. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, and I'm going to catch up on these in a second. Um, but I was praying, or I knew God was leading me into this fast for many reasons. And specifically, the water fast, because 
in previous fasts, it's just like, okay, yeah, it's nothing. It wasn't, it's it's like, okay, cool. I can't eat that. No problem. I can't do that. I got to do this at that time. Cool. Whatever. No problem. However, at, I knew I, so I needed, I, I knew I needed a fast that was going to really challenge me and require me to rely on God. So I knew it was the Esther fast that he was telling me to do. I knew it was these days because God had revealed to me in either December, I think it was December, that on February 16th, my baby was going to be birthed. Now I realized, I'm like, oh, it wasn't a year on that thing. I just was like, okay, February is December. Then it must be February, 2022. I don't know. But anyway, so on February 16th, the devotional for that day, y'all know I'm following Jesus Calling as my daily devotional for the year. The devotional for February 16th, the scripture, you know, I don't know if you've seen it, but she has three scriptures for each of the days. One of the scriptures, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Then I, I'm reading a book, the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. And then in this moment, I can't remember the sixth way, but it's just like, okay, this is what God is saying. All right, let me catch up on these. And then um, then we're going to dive into these four kinds of grace. And I have five scriptures on grace that we're just going to expound upon and talk about. So just so we know. Yes, I love that you call her Blackberry. He always playing. He always under attack. Uh Mm, yes, you're right. Facts, because ultimately that's irrelevant because Jesus is the truth. Like let God right now, let me declare that you are the truth more than I ever am concerned about the devil being a liar. Um, um, okay. We, that's where we were. The devil has to flee. The devil has to flee right now. Jesus we plead the blood and we declare, we say Jesus, 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 because we know that the enemy can't stand to hear. The enemy can't stand up against your name alone. It's so mighty. It's so powerful. God, we know that demons fall, that that um, they flee at the sound of your name. So we speak Jesus over health. We speak Jesus over relationship. So we speak Jesus over circumstances that we can't bring to voice, that we can't talk about, that we can't speak about, Father God. We speak Jesus over our finances. We speak Jesus over our dreams and the things that we're believing God for. We speak Jesus over our children. Children. We speak Jesus over college campuses. We speak Jesus over this government. We speak Jesus over COVID. Father God, we just speak Jesus in every area of our lives, Father God, because we are victorious, because you are the winner, because God, you loved us, because you are filled with grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. He has to flee, period. He got to flee. He got to go. Can't be around here. Yes, glory to God. And Corey, you have been such a blessing. Father, in the, yes, yes. And you know what, Jasmine? I feel you and I can relate. What I have done is I have written out all the names of the women, the ministries, the businesses, the organizations that I want to pour into, that I want to bless. And I pray over those things. And I, and so like, cause that's a desire of my heart. And um, I agree so much with what Delissa had said during Bible study last night. Um, but um, so with desires of heart, I just want to throw that out there. If you weren't there, you don't know. So, so sorry about that. Um, maybe I'll explain in a second, but it's a desire of your heart that God has put in your heart to desire. And so there's a reason you want to help these people. Or you want to gift these people. There are even people that I, I just want to gift things. to. I want to do something nice for, but I can't in this season. Um, and so I just always write it down instead of getting frustrated about it or like overwhelmed or thinking like, God, you know, I'm trying to glorify you. I'm trying to do something for you. I'm trying to be generous in your name. Like, why won't you just bless it? Why won't you just do it? I just put it in my prayer because we have not because we ask not because um, we can take everything to God in prayer. And I just say, God, show me how I can bless these people in this season. God, I praise you in advance that I am going to be a seed sower in the lives of these people. God, I pray that right now you're sending other people into their lives that can bless them, that can do the things that I desire to do in my heart. Just want to throw that out there like, yes, I do that all the time um yes yes it does coincide um 
Kendall is such a blessing. And I mean, she's such a blessing. I can't wait to see Kendall's um, video. I don't know if it'll be a live stream. I just saw it quickly on um, how the fast went for her. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So let me, I'm going to, I'll do the scriptures last. Let me talk to you about these four different kinds of grace. Because again, I feel like we, we dummy down grace. When grace is the whole point of the gospel, when the whole G God's love story for humanity is grace. So when I know for me, I don't, I don't want to say we, but when someone says God will give you grace to get through it, God will, um, God, there's enough grace for today. Give yourself grace, say your grace. It's always like grace becomes an excuse or justification, not just an excuse, um, grace becomes justification for not doing something. It's like, oh, I got this thing that I need to do, but today I just don't have it in me to get it done. Let me give myself grace and go to sleep. Or, oh, I did that thing, but it wasn't the way I knew it was supposed to be, or it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Let me give myself grace. And it's like, yes, that is a part of grace, but grace is more than justifying the things that we don't do it's so much bigger it's so much more grace is more than praying over your food grace is more than like just enough we don't serve a just enough god and i just want us to walk away from that ideology of like oh grace means good enough just enough in this moment right now like because we think grace for today but even what God gives me to get through today is exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever ask or think even the fact that I can get through a hard situation and God has graced you for that. And you have the grace for that. That is a miracle. So I, I just, I want to stop dismissing grace. One of the first kinds of grace, and there are probably um, other ways or other um, forms, but this is just an article I stumbled upon. Um, Listen, prayer has no expiration date and is not limited to any geographical location. Prayer is always in order, even if you can't so financially use what, what she said, what she said, like, oh my gosh. And that, that's so good and so important because in addition to praying over those organizations, I don't want to be, or those people or whatever, it to be like a last resort or a plan B or my second best. No, that's the best thing I could do. That's more than anything that I can give. Putting something in God's hand is so much greater than anything that comes from my hand, right? Like, so yes, that is a big thing. That is a major thing. God can move mountains. God can open doors. God can change lives. And my little, um, I ain't gonna say look, cause it ain't look, but my $10, can't do what God can do. So let me pray. Even if I can sow a seed financially, let me make sure that I'm praying all the time. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I know it's on Monday and I'll be there. I will be there. All right, common grace is the first one. And it is the fact that God loves all of us. God loves everybody. We get it. Um, common grace is God's kindness to everyone, whether or not they acknowledge him. That was good for me because, you know, we live in this world where our human proclivity is to is to compare and to be like, which I'm, I'm going to do a video on in April. I know it sounds like far away, but, you know, God's timing. I'll tell you all more about that. And so we can say, well, God, I'm out here doing X, Y and Z for the kingdom. How am I not prospering? How am I going through? How am I burdened? How am I sick in my body? How am I troubled in my spirit? And they're not. They seem to have more grace than I have grace. Well, the thing is, God gives common grace. And that's grace to everybody, whether they acknowledge him or not. While it is true that believers will experience both common grace and saving grace, won't he do it? Those who are apart from Christ will only experience common grace in this life. Okay, cool. So the first one is common grace. Hello, Solid 7. So glad you are here. I mean, CSA is in the house. That's the high school um, we went to. Myself, Jasmine, and Solid 7. I believe uh, Real Girl Food World was around at some point. Arts House, Cleveland School of the Arts. <laughs> Throwback. All right, so the second form of grace is preeminent grace. And this grace just means to proceed. 
And so this, I love, I love reading about this. I'm trying to get all the cliff notes. Um, and this is the work that prepares us and prepares our hearts to receive grace. You know, when you was in the world and you was wilding out, you was doing all kinds of stuff you shouldn't have been doing and you were fornicating and you were lying and you were gossiping and you were stealing and you were speaking death over things that you didn't even know and you were putting yourself in situations where you were jeopardizing your life. Well, it's this kind of grace that saved your life. It's this kind of grace that got you to where you are today, walking in God. And so when I... um. Thinking about this grace also makes me want to give more grace because as a believer, we can feel like, oh, well, God, I'm saved. I've submitted my life to you. I'm living for you. And there are friends, family members, children whom I want to live for you too. And because my lifestyle for you looks like this, I think that everybody's life for you has to look like this. Like if you submit it to Christ, that means you going to church every day, you reading your Bible every day, you praying every day, you giving every day, you sowing every day, you worshiping every day, you listening to sermons every day, you walking in purpose every day. And we have to understand um, preeminent grace. And let me type it in the chat for you because y'all know me, Alabama, Cleveland, North Carolina, Illinois, and now Texas and Tennessee all mixed together will have me butchering some words. Um, Pre-evident, prevenient, prevenient. I don't know. But what I'm about to do is use what God gave me real quick because I'm going to have to know. I'm going to have to know. Up, uh, up, oh, up. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry, y'all. Uh, I got to I gotta go to my girl over here over on um, dictionary.com. Prevenient. 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 Did y'all hear? Could y can y'all hear her? I don't know if y'all can hear her. And y'all know me. I'm always going. I'm always going to be uh tra transparent because everything I know, he taught me. So if I do know some, it's not because of me. My mind is all God. Okay. Um, and when I don't know something, I'm going to make it clear. Okay. But we have to understand that that kind of great, like God is, he's good enough. He's grace filled enough to cover them, to keep them, to get them on track. He has a plan, a path for them that he has ordered that is perfect for their lives. So I ain't got a trip when my child was out of line. I ain't got a trip when my my loved one is uh, doing everything except submitting to God. Because I know that there is prevenient grace in the name of Jesus. All right. Um, the next kind of grace is justifying grace. We all we know that we all fall short of God's glory. So no matter how hard we try or how much effort we exert, we cannot be good enough. We cannot be good enough. And Holy Spirit is speaking to me on that right now because of God's great love for us. He made a way through Christ for us to be pardoned or justified. OK, earlier on in the chat, I said that if you are a creator, if you're in corporate America, if you are an entrepreneur, whatever, Whatever the rules are in that arena, they don't apply to you because you are a kingdom kid. Here's the thing, because there's justifying grace. You're not good enough. You're never going to be a good enough. I sit here and I complain. Uh, Sonny can tell you about I put so much time, energy and effort into YouTube um, because that's what God told me to do. That's where God told me to start sharing his truth and his word with women so we can conquer life and everything it throws at us. So I be full out confused as to why. And I want you to apply to your life. What's the area where you like, God, I'm doing what you told me to do. So the fact that I'm working where you told me to work and I don't fully see you working is confusing me. Think about that area of your life and hear this. I know you put a lot of work into it. You put a lot of time into it. You put a lot of money, a lot of resources, a lot of blood, sweat, tears, prayers, belief, faith, trust in God, all of that on that thing. And you like, why is it not working? I've clearly done everything I could possibly do. Why is it not working? Let me tell you this. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. So I can stop looking at what I've done and feel like, well, God, I edited for this long. I made this thumbnail. I studied this long for the video. I like... I had this much energy. I did this. I had this lighting, this camera, whatever your situation is. Why is it not working? It's going to work. 
if God told you to do it, period. It's going to be fruitful. It's going to multiply. It's going to be prosperous. It's prosperous. It's going to make room for you, period. And I declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. However, it's not going to work because you're working. It's not dependent on you. It's not about... Girl, you can come on here and have no thumbnail. You can show, you can apply for that job and only have 50% of the credentials. Guess what? You can have, or you can come on there and you can have, you can go above and beyond the el eligibility requirements. Guess what? It's still not good enough because you're not justified through your skills, your talent, your works, or any of that. You are justified through God and God alone. And God wants us to get that. He wants us to know that. He wants to show us that. And His justifying grace is sufficient it is enough and i believe that i hope that this is speaking to somebody and making sense to somebody specifically my perfectionist out there because you know i can relate thing is we can be freed from anxiety from depression from pressure from perfectionism as soon as we realize that even on my best day it's not good enough. So even if I do this thing perfectly, it's still not going to open the door. It's still not going to bring going to warrant the um the breakthrough. It's not going to do it. So if I know in my mind that nothing I can do will move like in my own strength will move mountains then I don't know about you, but that just takes so much pressure off me and it prompts me to lean all the more on God of like, God, I'm doing this thing through you. I'm doing this thing through you. I'm doing this thing for you. And I'm doing this thing because of you and your directions to do it. And I pray, sis, that you will no longer feel the pressure to perform perfectly. It's a waste of your time because it could be on your bad day, God can make that thing work. On your worst video, he can make that thing work. On your worst day, your worst look, your worst outfit, your worst interview, like he make that thing work. Your worst credit score, your worst weight or whatever it is in your life. And he can do it. Why? Because he justifies me. He says that I'm good enough. He says that I'm worthy. He says that I'm called. He says that I'm anointed. He says that this is my lane. He says that he's expanding my territory in this arena irrespective of what I do. All I have to do is trust him. All I have to do is lean on him. All I have to do is seek him. All I have to do is obey him. And that's why like during the fast, I was like, God, like I want to upload. I want to upload. Hey, real girl, food world. So glad to see you over there. I don't know who else is with you, but I see your picture and you beautiful. Um, Rodnesha. Okay. Rodnesha, you're so beautiful. Um, so glad you're here. If you want to join us over on YouTube, please feel free to do so. Um, hello to the person who just came into the room. Here's the thing. God, I don't know where I was. I'm so sorry, but God is going to, God is going to do it. And, oh, I was like, God, if I'm open, if you want me to upload a video on Thursday, I will upload a video on Thursday. If you don't, then I won't because God is going to bless it no matter what I do. My heart is submitted to him, so he's going to bless it. Hello, my love. My, my heart is pure. My intentions are pure. I just want to glorify his name. So he's going to do it whether I'm uploading or not. We got to get rid of the pressure, even going into the fast. And then I'm going to talk about the fourth way, the fourth form of grace. And then we're going to get these five scriptures. Going into the fast, I was like, okay, God, I already know. I'm not going to post on Instagram. I'm not going to check Instagram. I'm not going to check YouTube studio. I'm not going to, um, cool, like I'm going to do that, y'all, because I will. I check YouTube studio. You know how the way people log on to Instagram or log on to TikTok and whatever? No, I'm in the YouTube studio. I'm trying to look at the algorithms because I know this is what God told me, or look at the data, because the analytics, because I know this is what God told me to do. So obviously this is what God is going to bless and he's going to prosper. So every minute I'm like, okay, God, did you prosper it yet? Did you prosper it yet? Did you prosper it yet? And he has, and he did. And he, whether the numbers are there or not, because women are are acting on the fact that they can conquer life and everything it throws at them, period. So, and I've told y'all in previous weeks, we operate for an audience of one. So I'm like, God, even now, free me from the desire to check analytics. Who cares? I told you, his grace is sufficient, meaning I, I live above analytics. I live above the algorithm. 
No, God's going to do it in his timing. Um, but anyway, so I knew going into the fast that I wasn't going to do those things. But I was like, God, you know, I really been I've been uploading every day. Mine is maybe three to five days since December 12th on TikTok and TikTok is really growing. So God, I was like, so I was like, God, you know, I already recorded the TikToks. I'll just, all I got to do is go in and load them. I won't respond to comments or anything. I'll just go ahead and post them. It's like, no, no, because I don't care. TikTok ain't got a TikTok. YouTube ain't got a YouTube and YouTube does not YouTube. Instagram ain't got an Instagram because God is always going to God. God is always going to move. God is always going to speak. God is always going to provide. God is always going to open. God is always going to heal. God is always going to deliver. God is always going to speak. So I don't even need all those things to do all those things to do. As long as God is sitting on th throne, sitting high and looking low, then I got the green light to go. Won't he do it? Won't he make it rhyme? All right, let me get back to the chats and then I'm give us this fourth form of grace. Yes, it's the sisterhood and the fellowship for me. You know, I love when we in here talking together. Yes, 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 yes. Thanks so much, Delissa. I praise God for you getting us the notes. Um, one of my YouTube colleagues, my sis, my good friend, um, she said that I am the usher. I'm the usher of the lives because I'm typically welcoming everybody in, putting the um, notes in the chat, et cetera. So I appreciate you for being an usher of the live today. Y'all, forgive me as I catch up. Thanks so much. You own it, boo, and I love it. I'm grateful for you. If I did not speak to you, I apologize. Yes, yes, yes. Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, speak. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. So, yes, move, mighty God. Please move. Yes, glory, glory, glory. I, we understood we was right with you, boo. All right, and then the fourth kind of grace is sanctifying grace. And it is, um, it, it enables us to be a Christian. Obviously, we know, purify me, sanctify me. And this is the pruning. This is the process where we our lives are transformed, where we live for Christ, where we're submitted to Christ, where we are serving Christ. So sanctifying, it is the process. Like, yes, he gives me, the strength, the ability, the mindset, the desire to submit to God. Um, no, you told silly real girl food where I promise you he did. And even if he had told me to upload on Thursday, I those who were on the fast know I was so weak, I wouldn't have been able to, it was no editing happening. I just sat back and let God edit my life because I was not going to edit a video. Um, but, so we get it, sanctifying grace, there was um, common grace, prevenient grace, come on, vocabulary words, justifying grace and sanctifying grace. And we know that his grace is sufficient. Whether it's common, whether it's just like, whether, whether it's coming of like, yes, I just need some goodness, some kindness, some love, some mercy. It's sufficient for the day. If you just need a kind word, if you just need encouragement, you just need somebody to love you, you just need compassion. Guess what? There's common grace for that. And it is sufficient. There's also prevenient grace. If you are not, if you have not submitted your life to Christ, or even if you have, and you just feel like you're not at the level in your relationship with with Christ, know that there's prevenient grace that is calling you forward toward now, that's keeping you right now, that's directing you right now, that's going to get you to where you're supposed to be. Because sometimes we can get frustrated of like, I just wish I was further in my relationship. I wish I was higher. Like I was on a call last night with the women and, you know, the conversation was so rich and so deep. And I have in previous seasons, I've been frustrated with God of like, why ain't that deep? Like, why you ain't show me that? You ain't do that over here. And it's like, no, 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 there's prevenient grace and it's sufficient for you. I'm going to get you there. I'm going to guide you in this thing called your relationship with me. I, My word is light unto your feet. Like, I have a path for you and it's perfect. It's a process for you to harm you. I have my plan and my path for you, okay? And then there's justifying grace that is sufficient because even if you are that thing that you've been called to do, you can't do it in your own mind. And yeah, you might, God may have given you a little talent. He may have given you a little gift. He may have given, it's not little because nothing from our big God is little, okay? Um, 
He's giving you these things, but even still, it is him alone who justifies you. It's not the gift that he's giving you. It's not the talent. It's not the position. It's not the intelligence. It's not the husband. It's not the money. It's not the family. It's not the location. It's not any of that. Yes, those are gifts from God, but he doesn't use his gifts to do what only he can do. It's still him who does the justifying. His grace is sufficient enough to make you enough for whatever it is that he wants to do in your life. If it's provide the home, if it's have the job, if it's growing your career, if it's start the business, he justifies you and all that. And then the last one is sanctifying grace. And we know, we know that the process of sanctification is so hard. It is so hard, but, um, but God, but his grace is sufficient, sufficient, but we can handle it, but we can take it, but we can move, but we can keep for, um, moving forward, but we can endure period. Yes, because I know you are, but I just had to clarify you. I really went into the week like, because, you know, God, I'm just going to be serving you and worshiping you. And one of the ways I ser serve you is through this channel that you told me to do. So I don't want to do no video. We know my flesh was like, I don't even want to do no video. But if you want me to do a video, I got you, God. I'm going to do whatever you told me to do. And God's like, no, no, no. No, I struggled, y'all. Um, but by the grace of God that is sufficient, I made it. Um, yes, yes, we're praying for you. Yes, Father God, I just pray for Jasmine right now. God, her life is beautiful. Her, her life is anointed. Her life is ordained. Father God, what a blessing, what a miracle it is that she um, pursued medicine, that she is wrapping up her medical school career. I pray right now that you would just prosper her as she sits for her um, exams, for her board exam. And God, I don't even know the terminology and all that, but you do. You know everything. You know all things. And I pray that you would just bring everything that she's learned, even the things that she did learn that were missed along, the, missed along the way, God, even the things that she's studying for and learning right now. I pray that you would bring it all to remembrance for her, that you would pour out of her, that you would speak through her, that you would move through her, that you would give her strength, that you would give her endurance, that you would give her answers, that you would give her eloquence, that you would give her um, a strong mind, Father God. And I pray that you would just that the results will be favorable, that she will get all, that she will achieve and advance to the next level, Father God, and that she will get all that you have for her in this season. We cover her with your blood, Father God, and we declare Jesus over all that she pursues. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. Rest. Rest. He made us to rest. It is like, yes, I just was so grateful even during the fast. It was like, rest. And that's okay. Because that's what I want you to do. It's better than okay. Because while you rest, I work. You out my way, you move. I put in the um, one of the days in the devotional, uh, which if you haven't got your copy, you can still get your copy. And I'm just going to tell you all something that everybody doesn't know. I was fasting on the day that the His and Hers bundle was supposed to end. So I, that link is still out there and available so it's in some youtube videos it's on my instagram account in my bio i'm gonna change it today but if you haven't ordered yet there's still time to order at a major discount but anyway just throwing it out there i put um on one of the days just how you know sometimes as a mom you're like you're doing all the things you clean up you've been working hard all day you know got this house clean from top to bottom stuff is organized it's the way you like it and you just, your kids start trying to help. But when they help and they really hurt, and it's like, you you really, in a way, you really messing this up. I prefer you to just go sit down, you to just go, go to sleep, go take a nap. And I believe that God says that to us sometimes. Hello, Elizabeth, love. Um, will one of you share the link? I can share it, actually. Give me a second, I'll share it. Um, but God wants us to rest. He wants us to get out his way. So he can clean up what we've messed up so that he can make way, so he can polish that thing, so he can restore that thing, so he can renew that thing. So we just got to rest. We just got to rest. Our pastor always talks about, um, you know, when you go into surgery, they're fixing things, they're transforming things, they're taking things out that should not be there or whatever it is. And they put you to sleep. 
So yes, yes, I pray that you rest. And as you rest, God restores your mind. We're all touching and agreeing with you. Thank you, mighty woman of God. Y'all know Sherry over there anointed. So yeah, honey, you better get up under that anointing right there. Um, yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, I will get it for you, Elizabeth. I don't know if you're on Instagram, but if you are, the link is in my bio over there. It's at Yasmin underscore Williams Woods. But at the end of this chat, I will put it in the, or at the end of this live, I will put it in the comments. Oh, there, um, she has it for you. Is that the bundle, Kendall? That might take her to the link that's full price. I'm not sure. But don't you stress yourself, Kendall, because y'all do enough. And I praise God. For each of you. Okay, so I'm going to tell y'all. I told y'all six times. Six times Jesus gave me the scripture that I did not want. And so one of our five scriptures is um, awesome. I love it. So it's in my bio over there. If you just click that link, it'll say his and hers bundle. And um, you'll be able to get it, get it there if you choose to. And so... I'm going to read, I'm going to read the scripture. That's one of our four scriptures or one of our five scriptures is second Corinthians verse seven through nine. I'm going to read it to y'all in the NIV, and then I'm going to read it to you in the message. I know you know it, but go with me. Okay. Um, or because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Sis, that thing, thank you. Y'all Y'all are just blessings. Y'all are just gifts to um to god and and me and his work that he's doing i'm i'm so grateful for y'all doing that glory to god thank you thank you um so um that thing in your life that area in your life where you are where you're like god this sucks this is awful this is tragic this is trash this is not what you said in your word guess what that thing right there is where god is going to move most mightily in your life i believe it i stand in agreement with you and i declare it in the name of jesus and i also know because i know for myself there is a thing in my life that god knows and i'm, I'm just going to tell you how god ministered this thing to me where god knows i have prayed i have prayed more than i've prayed in any situation in any circumstances like been on my face dug in his word like prayed prayed begged pleaded god please do it and he didn't and he hasn't and maybe he never will and that's cool with me that's cool with me after really receiving this word he says because i can agree i can see where his power has been made perfect in this area of my life. It's like, I have faith. And I know people say that thing in your life, like if it never would have come, you wouldn't pray like you pray. You wouldn't believe like you believe. You wouldn't trust like you trust. True, 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 true. Facts, facts, facts. I wouldn't be in purpose if it wasn't for the very thing I asked God to remove. So again, that thing that you want God to just fix to just take away, understand that maybe he's not fixing it, but he's fixing you. He's preparing you. You know, we want him to repair things, but instead he prepares us for purpose, for what it is that he wants to do. Because if God would have answered my prayers the way I wanted him to answer my prayer, I wouldn't be sharing his truth. I wouldn't out who, oh, girl, I would be somewhere the founder of a charter school, okay? I would be teaching educators how to teach our children. And I'm still passionate about, you know, socioeconomic equity um, as it pertains to education specifically, all about it. It's important to get into it. But, um, and Jasmine, one of the, that's one of many of the ministries I want to pour into go directly to that. So, you know, God's going, I'm still going to be able to do 
those things in some way. But this is my purpose. And if he took taken away the thorn, I wouldn't be here. So I can vividly see how he prepared me for purpose, how he perfected his strength where I was weak. Like, y'all, it's just the word is so real. And I want you to think specifically. I want you to think concretely in your life about what are you trying to get rid of? What do you want more than anything? That number one thing that you're like, God, fix this. And you've been asking him for years, maybe even decades, maybe your whole life. And a couple of you, like, I, I can imagine what that thing is. Um, or I know from our interactions, the conversation, what that thing is for you. Guess what? That's the thing where God is showing you him. That's the thing where God is going to use you to show him to other people. I'm telling you, my my videos that speak most directly to the thorn in my side are the videos where I get the most DMs about I, the, uh, how women are blessed. I am not kidding y'all. And I'm not saying that to be boastful. I'm boasting of my weakness. I'm about to come to tears because God is just making me realize that now it really literally is the place where his strength has been perfected because I have that thorn. Can't nobody pour into women who are going through that, who are facing in that like I can because I know firsthand. I know because the thorn is right here, but it's still here. It's still here. So again, that thing that you can like, God just changed this about me. Just fix my mindset on this. Just deliver me from this way of talking. Just deliver me from this way of believing, this way of acting or whatever it is. Deliver me from this way. What it, look, it's there because God is perfecting his strength in that place. So will you just give it to him? You say, God, you know, rather than you taking this from me, will you show me what you want to do with this? If you want to take it, you know, you got to have a Jesus moment. God, if you want to take this cup, please take this cup because I don't want this cup. But if you want me to have this cup, I'm going to take this cup and I'm going to glorify your name with this cup. Because only you can reach the people who God has created you to reach. Because only you are dealing with that thorn the way that you are dealing with that thorn. Only you know that thorn intricately intricately intimately only you know it with great detail and there are women waiting on you not that you got to have a youtube channel or whatever just you know whether you're in medicine like our girl jasmine over here or whatever you had to go through it as our as our bishop said i was trying to say pastor and bishop as our bishop said on sunday god knew you needed it you never would have been in purpose without it never never um Thanks so much, Kendall. I love y'all. Y'all are great. Desiree, I'm so glad to see you in the room. Okay, so now let me read. Um, now let me read it to you in the message, okay? Because, you know, the message always is the message. But yeah. Hello, hello. So glad that you're here. If you want to join us over on YouTube, Unstoppable Butterfly. Yes, number seven, because that's my favorite number. You better serve the number of completion period, because God is completing some things in your life. He is bringing things to an end. He is delivering you from some things. If you want to join us over on the YouTube live, I encourage you to do that there. The ladies are um, ready to stand in agreement with you. Um, yes, come on now. Well, that thing will preach you. It'll preach you. Um, I love it. I hope you will, but if you don't, I'll be back and forth. Um, all right, so in the Amplified version, it is because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get a big head. I was given the gift of a handicap. Go back. I'm going to have to pause it. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, because of the call on your life, because of the anointed on your life, because of the things you've seen, because of the places you've gone, because of the things you know, because of the opportunities you've had, because of the things that God wants to do in your life to you, through you, and for you. You had to go through it. You had you had to go through it because I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. For Paul, he said, you know, the thorn. He didn't remove the thorn. I'm glad. God, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit does it every time. And like, I'm not kidding you. He's so good. Paul, the thorn was never removed, as far as we know, from Paul. But woman of God, I just got to say this to somebody. I don't know. It might be for you. It's possible that the thorn is going to be removed in your life. That thing that we've been fixated on throughout 
holding on to, clinging to, reflecting on. And the fact is that God is going to bless you so bountifully, so abundantly, so mightily in that specific area. Hi, Shanae. I pray that I'm pronouncing your name um, correctly. So glad that you made it over. Yes, I love it. Um, but God is going to bless you so mightily in that area regarding that thorn that he had to say, you know what? I had to leave it there for a little bit. I had to leave it there for as long as I left it there because I didn't want you to get conceited because what I'm about to bless the way I'm about you about to blow up. And I don't even mean that financially. I just mean, however, God wants to prosper you. However, he wants to be glorified, right? The glory that God gets from your life is going to be so, so mighty that, um, he was like, no, no, no. I had to leave it there for a little bit because I didn't want you to get conceited. We can get wrapped up. God, we can start to be full in life. God can start to move and do things mightily in our lives. And we feel like, oh, I'm here. Oh, I do this. Only go there. Uh, 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 that's beneath me. I'm not going to do that. And no, 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 no. Um, but God was like, I don't want that to be you. So I kept that thorn there because I had to humble you. And more importantly than keeping you humble, keeping you grounded, I also, I also just had to move in a way that you know it was me. Like, I don't want you to think that it was your talent, that it was your degrees, that it was your finances because you invested over here and you did this over there. I don't want it was because you knew her and y'all connected. I don't want you to think it was because you went viral or whatever. No, no, no. It was me. That's why I left that thorn there. So you would never not know that it was me working and moving in your life. And even now, I'm like, even when we look at the Messiah, he came as a baby. He came in a most humble way, like the way we all got here. You can't get more humble than like hum humanity because humanity is broken. It's tragic. It's trashy. It's a mess. And so... um. But it was like he had to come in such a humble way. So then when he did what he did on the cross, glory to God, thank you that you did it. We we had no, uh, what are we going to say? What are we going to blame that on? How are we going to explain that away? How are we going to rationalize that? It's nothing but God. So right now you're in that humble season. Right now you're in that broken season. Right now you might even be in that impoverished season. I rebuke the, the spirit of poverty in the name of Jesus. But you're in that place because when God removes that thorn, he wants you to know that it was him and only him. Not only you, but he wants those who are watching you, those who see you, those who are called to be touched by you to also know it was him and only him because all things are possible through Christ and nothing is possible without him in the name of Jesus, unless you want a whole hot mess. And that's what we're not going to do. And y'all, let me just say this transparently. And I only got five scriptures today. I know we've been on here for two hours the last two weeks. We're not about to be on here two hours today. Okay. And I declare that in the name of Jesus. And y'all see how many times I say, okay, can you imagine when I'm recording a video? How many times I'm like, okay, okay. And I'm like, I can't have these people here for 15 minutes. And I done said, okay, 9 million times. So random, but that's why editing takes me so long. But anyway, even now transparently, and y'all have heard me say this, and it's a little bit in the book, I think. Yes, unless it was edited out. It's in the book. Um, that... I am in this apartment and I sent Sonny and my good friend Sarah B a picture last week, y'all. It was the hoodest picture. I'm not going to describe it because I don't want to offend anybody, but it was it was really extremely. And y'all know I was raised in poverty. I get it. This, this was beyond that. It was it was just. It was hoodly hood like this only happens in here. So I'm not like judge. It just was like, yeah, this is hood. And it was like, God, how we get from there to here, to home ownership to here, to build the house of my dreams to here. And I know I'm going to declare on my own life is God saying, because, and I've been here way longer than I thought I was ever going to be here. And I'm going to be here a little bit longer. God made that clear to me. And I've, and I'm like praising his name for it. Yep. Yep, I'm here, God, because as Michael Todd is saying in the sermon, here is holy. More beyond that, before I even heard that, here's where God has me. So, so I'm good. I'm straight. But um, I know God is saying, because what I'm going to do in your life regarding your next home I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need everybody to know it was nothing but me. I'm gonna need everybody to know because y'all don't know that before we lived in our 
before we purchased our last house, six of us lived in a two bedroom apartment for for a year. Six of us. And I mean, it was even smaller than this apartment. And so it was like, they don't, they don't know your struggle. They don't know what you sacrificed. They don't know what you gave up. But now you're in front of them. And I want them to, I want them to see me. Like, I don't want them to see like, oh, she got this. She goes here. She does that. Cause y'all, I don't, I'm a, I don't. Those in mothership know. Yes. Jesus, I need you. Come on, provide. Come on, Jira. Make a way. When they say his grace is sufficient, his grace is realized sufficient. Cause all, most days, all I got is sufficient grace and insufficient funds. Okay. Um, so, yes, it's real. But y'all don't know my struggle, if you will. And it's, it's not even struggle. At this point, it's divine. It's divine. God, give me the word. I don't know. It's, it's orchestration. It is steps, okay? It's not a struggle. It is a step, okay? But y'all don't know the steps that I take that, or I have taken. So he's like, no, nah, let, let me let them see because I don't want them to see what I'm about to do and feel like, oh, she got this, she done this, and did it. Nah, I want them to know that, I'm doing it for you, and I can also do it for them. It don't matter what their situation look like. It don't matter how humble of a place they're in. I'm still going to move. It don't matter what the thorn look like. I'm still going to move. I am still perfecting strength in weak places. I am, Whether your finances are weak, your home life are weak, your relationships are weak, your confidence is weak, your strength is weak, your mama is weak, your daddy is weak. Honey, he is perfecting his strength. Believe me, okay? But all that to say, the most hilariously hood thing happened and I was like, I just can't even believe I, I'm here. Like, God, I'm laughing, but maybe I'm laughing and crying because this is crazy that this is what I see. And um, and I just know it's like God's like humbling me. And he's making sure that everything in my life is about him and it's about glorifying him. Last night in Mothership, we talked about um, we talked about just giving, giving everything that we desire, giving it to God. And God is like, nah, nah, I'm going to make sure that this next home, you give it completely to me to glorify me. That it is a place where women can come, where they can feel welcome, where they can feel love, where women grow in the word, where, you know, you know, all the things like it's him, whatever he gives me, he, I'm giving it back to him. Period, point blank. I hope that made sense to somebody, but I was just trying to tell you that your girl over here got a thorn and that you might have a thorn and some thorns are not going to be removed, but there is a thorn in your life. And I felt God saying that, no, he's going to remove it and he's going to remove it in such a big way that he's like, now nah, I have to sit you down real quick. I had to give you that hilariously hood picture that you took. So that when I do take that thorn out, you could rem you won't be conceited, you won't be big headed, and you will know that it was me perfecting my strength the whole while. I'm gonna finish this, and I'll catch up on comments. Um, so da -da -da -da, message: I was given the gift of a handicap or the gift of some hood because it was hood, y'all. I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in co constant touch with my limitations. Yes, God, I'm limited. Satan's angels did his best to get me down. Don't you love the message version? Satan is doing his best to attack you, to wear you down, to make you give up, to make you quit, to make you doubt God, to make you stop believing in yourself, to stop believing in the promise that God spoke over your life. He trying his best to get you down, but he is a lie and God is the truth. What he went, what he in fact did was push me to my knees, push me to my face, push me on a three day water fast. Woo! He messed up. He messed up. He messed up, sis. Sis, he messed up when he let you log in today. He messed up when he let you open that Bible. He messed up when he let you turn that um, worship song on. He messed up. He, fell. he messed up when he tried God, when he thought Jesus was crucified and dead. <laughs> That's why he messed up. Okay, no danger. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. I've never had a big head. Never, ever, 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 and even on this YouTube channel. And I pray, y'all, I'm saying this for me in all transparency, but I hope you are over there speaking to God, receiving Holy Spirit about you and your situation. But even on this YouTube channel, because some of you have even declared things that God has spoken to you regarding my YouTube channel. Y'all have planted seeds in, in ways, even when he does it over here. I'll never get the big head. I'm still going to support the same people I support. I'm still going to tell them everything I know. I'm still going to share with them. I'm still going to share their stuff out. I'm still going to glorify God in whatever ways he tell me to glorify God. I will never, ever, 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 ever get the big head because what I know he taught me, where I am, he brought me. What I have, he gave me. Who I am, he made me, period. All right, here we go. Um, 
No danger then of me walking around high and mighty, period. I am one of his lowly daughters. Um, at first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Sis, that thing, that you, that thing, the thing we've been talking about, will you, whatever you're doing, stop and praise God for it right now. Praise God for that traumatic thing that happened to you or whatever, whatever your thing is. Praise God. Praise God. I praise God for the difficult relationships in my life. I praise God for them. It is a give. Paul told us to count it all joy. I praise God for this apartment, not just because it's a roof over my head, but because it is the place where God is perfecting his strength in my weak places. I praise God for the first video I ever did and two people watched it. Like I praise God because it was a gift. It's all a gift. Three times I did that. Then he told me my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I'm glad. I'm glad to drive past that hilariously hood thing I saw. I'm glad to, um, to keep leaning into that relationship, even if it hurts me, even if I feel rejected, even if I feel guilt or shame, even if like, if God got you there, it's where you're supposed to be. And it is a gift. That thorn, it is a gift. Um, I quit focusing on the handicap, on the hoodness and began appreciating the gift. It was, it was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. Can it be that when you start appreciating that gift, that it stops being as much of a handicap? Like, I mean, yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I pray that y'all, that y'all get this. Like, please just praise God for that thing. Trust God. God for that thorn. Brag about that thorn. Y'all, I get on here and I talk about I talk about the thorn. The thorn is what the thorn is. The thorn gonna be. That's why I don't I don't hide I don't hide anything. I tell y'all because it's it's about glorifying God. It's about what God is doing in my life. And I want you to know if he did it for me, he's gonna do it for you. The if he did it for me, he definitely gonna do it for you because I'm undeserving, because I'm wretched, because I'm broken, because I'm selfish, because I'm entitled. I am one of the most entitled Christians ever. And God has to get me together because y'all know during the past, I was like, God, where we at? Where we at, God? Because you, I mean, what you, what you going to do for me? Because I did something for you. What you going to do for me? The devil. Y'all got to get together. Keep praying for me. Um, But I want you to hear this before I give you these last four scriptures. What was it? Um, That thing is a gift. We talked about it. Um. I don't know, but Holy Spirit, if you need your daughters to hear it, will you bring it back to me? All right, let me catch up on the comments. But God, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory, God. Jasmine, we have just been enjoying you in Bible study for sure, for sure. Kendall dropped a link earlier on how you can join us on Thursdays from 6 to 7 for um, Bible study. We have two more weeks in this current study. Girl, ghetto, ghetto. Um, and it doesn't matter that you've missed the other sessions, like just, just hop in because we aren't directly continuing a specific study. We're going to be off of here in about 13 minutes max in the name of Jesus. Okay. The next scripture I want to give you second Corinthians nine and eight, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. When it says that his grace is sufficient. I want you to think of 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. It's not, again, it's not just, oh, simple. Because I, I told y'all, I was mad about this. I don't want this word, Jesus. This is not what I want. I don't want to hear about grace. And God was like, no, grace is everything you need. It's everything you need. It's everything you can't do. It's everything you desire. It's everything your soul yearns is grace. Okay. And grace is not just enough. As we talk about our God is more than enough. He's exceedingly and abundantly above all we've ever asked or thought. So let's stop thinking about grace as just enough. It says he's able to, his grace, who he is, is able to bless you abundantly, not just get you through the day, not just get you through that situation. He's able to bless you abundantly. 
in all things, at all times, not just sometimes, not just some situation, not just the areas of your life where you have talent, where you have gift, where you have clout, where you know people in all things, the areas where you broken, busted, disgusted, a hot, sinful, wretched mess of places that you embarrassed to talk about that you will never tell anybody that you shame about right there, right there. His grace is sufficient. His grace is more than enough. Um, and you're going to have all that you need. You will abound in every good work. And can we just right now touch and agree together that we going to operate like we have all that we need. We got everything we need. Sonny and I just enter into an agreement. I'll call it that a contractual binding agreement. And we like, uh, we got to have, we need some more. We need some more. And guess what, Sonny? We have what we need. I don't care what it looks like. Cause I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. We have what we need because my faith tells me that in all things, at all times, I'll have all that I need and I will abound and like his grace abounds in every good work. So, hmm, period. Okay, 2 Timothy 1 and 9, because I'm going to keep my word about getting off of this thing. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, not you. But because of his own purpose and grace, that's why I'm telling you why I said early, we're not we're not good enough. I, the video wasn't good enough. The job application wasn't good enough. The interview wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Your parenting wasn't good enough. None of it was good enough. But God, but the grace of God is what makes it good enough. What makes it more than enough It is his justifying grace that makes it good enough. Right. What we've been talking about. Sorry if you hopped in here late. Um, hope is making sense to you. OK, um, but for his own purpose, for his own purpose, God is going to be glorified, period, point blank. Nothing can thwart the plans of Jesus. Jesus, God is going to get his glory. Whether you get what you weigh on, I don't, we don't know. But is God going to be glorified through your life? Yes, because that's a definite. That's a guarantee. So again, I can stop tripping when it doesn't work out the way I want it to work out, when it doesn't go the way I want it to go, because... It's about his purpose, his purpose. Remember we said um, sometimes he won't repair that thing, but he will prepare you for a purpose, his purpose to be glorified. So I, I ain't got a trip when two people watch, when one person likes, when one person plants a seed of $2, when, when a half a person buys the book. It don't matter. It don't matter because he's going to be glorified for his purpose. Um this grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Girl, I got it now. I'm going to have it tomorrow. And I've been had it. I had it before I was here. Um, Isaiah 40 and 31, our sweet Delissa talked about this yesterday in the end of fast call. And it's just so relevant here. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. What will they do? Say it with me. They will soar on wings of eagles. They will grow. Um, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Like, just let the Holy Spirit speak to you right there, because what more can I say? The word has said it all. Y'all, it's his grace. I can run and not get weary. Now, if I'm operating in my own strength, I'm going to get tired. I'm going to get so tired, y'all. I'm on the third flow, okay? Um, another thing that, you know, God is going to remove that thorn. And... Your girl gets out walking the stairs. So if I'm running the race called life, if I'm trying to conquer life, my own strength and not by the grace of God, guess what? I'm going to get tired. But right here, his grace will help me run and not grow weary. His grace will help me to edit these videos every week, to get these videos out, to have this content every week or whatever it is, because we feel like, oh, like I had a, I did a great job in that presentation. I rocked out that meeting with my boss. I did all these things or whatever. I cooked a great meal for my family. And it's like, well... We start thinking about, well, what am I going to cook next week? What am I going to do if they ask me to present on this? I don't really know about that. God, what am I going to do if they, we start doubting, we start worrying about what's down the road, where his grace is sufficient for today, tomorrow, and forever. Like always, I don't have to worry about that because God's going to continue to pour into me, to continue to feel me, to continue. It's like, and I'm saying this from a content creator's perspective, but I want you to think about your own life. We can feel like, 
well, let me save this video to the end. Let me, well, I don't know about this idea. I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to share this because if I share it again, then what am I going to do then? Girl, whatever he gave you, give it out. Give it, 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 give it. Even sometimes we hold on to money. Well, if I get it now, if God told you to give it, you better believe that he's going to return to you and it's going to be double. It's going to be more than, more than you ever could have had had you held on to it, right? He's going to multiply that seed. Is Think about the, the, the talents, the parable of the talents. Um, but we don't have to be stressed out about, am I going to have enough because his grace is sufficient? Like I'm going to run and not grow rear. I'm not going to run out of ideas. I'm going to walk this thing called life out and I'm not going to faint. Like I'm going to, my strength is going to be renewed. My ideas are going to be renewed. He's the God of creativity. My creativity is going to be renewed. My like, it's him. I'm operating in him and his grace. I'm gone and grace has arrived. It's grace, 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 grace over your whole life, all of it, okay? And then the last scripture, Titus 2, 11 through 12, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. We're operating outside of grace. We want the growth. We want the financial breakthrough. We want the house. We want the car. We want all these earthly things. We have passions for these earthly things. And um, we get exhausted by that. And we, we get consumed by that. And we become conformed to that. But see, when I'm operating in grace, I can say no to that. I can say, I can say no to it. It's like, yeah, God's going to give. And God's going to provide. And God's going to make a way. And God's going to bless. And you know, but God's blessings add no sorrow. So what, what this scripture says to me here is like when the blessing comes or when the thing comes, I know through grace, whether or not it's of God and whether or not it's in his timing. And if it's not, I say no, because that's grace. I'm not, I don't want the thing. I just want what God has for me. Whether, you know, God has, and Delissa shared this too, not shared in Bible study last night, you know, has cancer for me I want it and I'll take it because that's his plan he has for me and I said for your glory I will do anything and he gives me grace to endure and he's going to be glorified through whatever I go through if God has an apartment for me I want it sign me up put my name on the lease if whatever he has for me I want it and it is a gift and I'm counting it joy because all of it is where he perfects his strength it is enough it is more than enough it's what I need like is what I need to be who he wants me to be. It is what I need in order to have that sanctifying grace that we talked about in order to be purified, in order to be strengthened, in order to become the woman of God who he's called me to do or called me to be, right? I pray that that's making sense to y'all. My whole point, and I'm gonna catch up on these comments and we're gonna pray. My whole point is, yes, God's grace is sufficient, but I really pray that we will reach a place where we no longer feel that sufficiency is just enough. And I mean, I wish I had in this moment, I'm like, I wish I had researched, you know, acronyms for, for um, sufficient and found other words to describe, to describe his grace in the way, in what it means in the spirit. Like it, in our flesh, we think sufficient is, enough to cover this but it's really it's overflowing it's abundant it's it's incomprehensible what his grace is and I pray that we receive his grace I just pray that we receive his bountiful grace no limitations on his grace no limitations whatsoever I hope anything I've said has made sense. Um, and I pray that God has spoken. It's a situation that's going to be situated. You know, I like that. You know, I'm I'm a lover of, of words and them sounding the same um, alliteration or being the wordplay. I'm just here for it. Uh, he messed up. He played too much. He really plays too much, like, for his own sake. Like, dude, you're wasting your time. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 
Oh, thanks so much. Glory God. Like it's, it's, it's my pleasure. In the words of every person who's ever worked at Chick-fil-A, my pleasure. Honestly, I, I, I am so grateful to God to be used to do this. And I will, I will take the thorns like for his glory. I will do anything. And I'm really starting to understand that in this season, it is grace that keeps me. It's his grace that opens doors. It is his grace that makes ways. It is his grace that connects me with his daughters. It is his grace. It is his grace. And he gave me, when I say we're going to give everything back to God, we're going to give everything back to him. He gave me this journey. He gave me this story. Everything that he gave, I'm going to glorify God with it. Even if it's ghetto. Get the glory out of the ghetto. Like, take it. Like, this is what you gave me. Let me pour it back out to you. And so this is my story. Good, bad, ugly, otherwise. So he going to do what he wants to do with it. Amen. Yes, it's for his people. And again, that's why I can rely on the fact that his grace is more than enough. His grace is um, sufficient because it's not about me. I'm not. It's like what I did on this video was a hot mess. I edited it to the best of my ability, but it's still a raggedy mess. But your grace is enough to use it to bless women, to empower women, to call women, to build women. It's like the things that you do, and I've heard women talk about this, it's like, I can't even believe people see that or saw that in me or believe that about me or think that about me or were impacted in that way. Or I can't believe that, you know, my boss said this or wrote that review. I'm just like, wow, I was just doing normal everyday things. And you were, but it was God's grace on top of that thing that made that thing um, rich that made it beautiful, that made it whole, that made it righteous, that made it powerful, that made it impactful. That's why I don't have to be a perfectionist because one, I know that I'll never be enough, um, but I'll submit it to the one who's more than enough. And I know that whatever I put out, if I really put it out with a pure heart, with pure intention, and I'm not just talking YouTube, that's and how I love my family, how I love my husband, how I connect with my husband, how I am intimate with my husband, how I love my son, how I you know, talk to my family, how I clean my house, how I cook my food, how I go to the store, how I drive my car. If I really put it all out there and um, with pure intentions, he going to bless that thing because it's about him. And it's about his glory. God, I took all I had, all that you have given me, and I put it out there. Now you do what only you can do. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, healthy way I live. So glad you are here, mighty woman of God. You have just been a gift and a blessing to um, my work and I am grateful for you y'all I'm so grateful for all of y'all if you got some prayer requests put them in the chat I can't say enough y'all last night on the live I was uh, I mean on the um in the fast call I was astounded I was floored I was like I couldn't believe and there were only four of us on the evening call but I I, I was like wow God you really are working. You really are being glorified. And it was in that moment where God really um, consummated what he has been saying to me through the fast of like, my grace is sufficient. I was able to see where like, it's like, no, my grace is making ways for you. No, my grace is connecting you. No, my grace is expanding your territory. No, my grace is working. My grace is moving. My grace is providing. My grace is overflowing. And I want you to get that. Like, his grace is more than enough. It's more than enough. His grace is all you need. It's extra. It's, it's beyond what you need. It's so much that you got some to give over. And that's, oh my gosh, thank you. I'm going to pray and close us because I could just, I could just go on. The thing is, it's like how I like, I get on here and I talk about, and it, with the thorns in my side is because I've been thinking like his grace is enough to get me through. His grace is enough to allow me to endure. And God's like, no, no. My grace will not just get you through it. My grace will create enough for you to have for there to be overflow in your life. My grace is not enough to just cover the debt. You're going to have overflow so you can pour into other people. My grace is not enough just for you to survive the situation. My grace is so rich and so full and so overflowing that you're going to, um, because of you, other people are going to be able to um going to be able to overcome and endure and prosper in that thing too. Like y'all, his grace is more than enough. If you ain't got nothing else, cause I've been all over New York and back, um, know that his grace is e his grace is more than enough. Um, I'll certainly will. Oh yes. Now 
I'm going to pray for you, Shalea, and I'm like, period, I am. But I'm going to pray nonstop. Like, I'm going to put your name, which Holy Spirit told me to do. I got to, I write, I have to write everything down. But what I really need to do is start writing down. Um, there are some more Bible beauties that I need to add to the list of like women that I pray for daily because I've just met so many more of you and I'm so like, that's God's grace and I'm excited about it. Now, Shalea, what I'm saying is I'm going to, um, and I'm going to do this anyway. So I'm, I'm being joke, um, jovial. I'm joking. Um, but I'm going to put your name on this list so I can pray for you daily. If you move into Austin. What part of Texas you moving to? Because if it's not Austin, I really am going to feel some type of way. But if it's Austin, I'm going to be so overjoyed and be like, look at God. Um, yes, it's the source. Y'all, his grace is amazing. He's so good. Let me pray for you. Um, Shalea, let us know what part you'll be moving to. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I'm praying for you either way. Just make sure I'm saying that clearly because I don't want you to be like, I don't want anybody to think that like, oh, my gosh. I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Dear miracle working God, dear promise keeping God, dear way maker, dear Jira, God, I love you. God, I adore you. God, I seek you. God, I submit to you. God, I praise you. God, I am so grateful for your grace that is overflowing, your grace that is never ending, your grace that is, is your love for us, your grace that you showed from when you created earth, the grace that you show since the garden of Gethsemane, I mean, not even Gethsemane, but yes, you did, Father God. But since the garden of Eden, God, thank you so much. Thank you for the grace that Jesus showed on the cross. Thank you, God. I, I mean, all we can do is just thank you for what you've already done. Thank you that we have more than enough in that situation, in those circumstances, um, in those hurtful places in our lives. We have more than what we need. And thank you that it was in grace that gave you, that gave us the hurting places in our lives, God. Thank you that you loved us so much that you that you knew to keep us humble. Thank you that you loved us so much that you knew to give us a story, that you knew to give us a testimony that we could then use to bless and glorify your name, that we then could use to prosper the kingdom and glorify the kingdom. God, thank you that we are a part of your glory, that we get to serve you, that we get to, um, that we get to be your workers, God. Thank you so very much. I praise you, God, that you are providing even right now for the women on this call, whatever their hearts desires are, Father God, not only have you given them to them, but you are going to give into those places, into those desires, God. I thank you that you are wiping tears, that you are opening wounds, that you are um, providing comfort through labor pains, that you are revealing, that you are giving clarity, that you are giving confidence, that you are restoring hope, that you are opening doors, that you are making ways, that you are producing love, that you are providing connection and relationships, Father God. I thank you right now for just your perfect will. May we get have eyes to see where you are prospering us and how your plan is not to hurt us. So I declare in the name of Jesus that we won't walk around with hurt, that we won't walk around with pain, that we won't walk around with depression because it's not of you. It's not what you have given us. Whether you are prospering us even now in the hurt places, you are prospering us. So I pray that, pray that we will lean on the places of prosperity as opposed to leaning on the places of pain, God. That we will lean on purpose as opposed to leaning on the problems, Father God. God, have your way, God. Give us eyes, ears, heart, mind, the wherewithal to just live for you, to just glorify you. We are, we are spiritual vessels, God. We are more than our flesh. We are more than our earthly circumstances. We are so much more. And I pray that we will live from that place. We will live from the place of victory. We will live from the place of joy. We will live from the place of more than enough. We will live from your grace, Father God. God, I pray for Shalea right now as she is um, 
making this transition to Texas. I pray that she would know that she has all that she needs, that she would know that. But God, I pray that she would always also see that, that she would feel that, that whatever she needs will manifest even now, God. I thank you that you are providing connection and jobs and opportunities and open doors and a place to live and a community to grow in and to thrive in, Father God. God, I thank you for her life. I thank you for every woman on here. And I don't know what they need, but I know whatever it is, you are it. You embody it. You possess it. You created it. And you will manifest it in the perfect time. God, I love you. I adore you. I praise you. I'm grateful for grace. Thank you. That is more than enough, more than we could have asked, ever imagined, or thought, God. We love you. We praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, sisters. I love y'all. I praise God for you. And I hope that you have an amazing weekend. I cannot wait um, for next week to be back on consistently. Hello to my sis, Carter's Eat. She's another, y'all, forget my voice. It's been gone since Monday, and which another reason I woke up with an attitude on the fast because I'm like, God, of all the times I'm going to be sick, really? Well, I'm not going to have a voice, really? Which was not the guy was like, because I don't want you recording no videos. I don't want you to think that this downtime is a time to create. It's a time to be in the face of the creator. But, you know, I already done talked y'all ears off about all of that. Let me find out where Shalaya going. Shalaya, do we know yet? Do we know yet? Do we know yet? Anyway, if you're going to Austin, let me know. Even if you're in Houston or Dallas, we know women there who are amazing and we want to... um I am happy to connect you. Yay. Oh, you're from CGGA. Oh, my gosh. They are such a blessed um, ministry as well. Love. So glad that you are here and that you made your way over. Um, yes. See, we're all praying for you in the chat. Amen. 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 Ladies, I love you. Yes, I'm going to rest this. I'm going to rest. I'm going to have me a great, wonderful weekend. My girls and I, we're having a, um, we're going to have us a girls weekend. And I am so excited about it because we about to, uh, we going to go to brunch tomorrow. We made brunch last week, but I ain't making nobody brunch. Okay. Um, yeah, we just going to have us a good old time and I'm, I'm excited. Um, all right, y'all. I love y'all. I will see y'all next week. Enjoy the weekend. Oh, let me say this. Let me say this while I'm playing because I'm not going to see y'all before today. I don't know what day of the week it is. Oh, no, I'm not going to see y'all before today. But my beautiful mom, y'all know her in the chat all the time. Sheila Williams Pope. I don't know if it's on there as Williams. I don't know her um, YouTube name anyway. But Sheila Pope, y'all, she is turning 70 on Sunday. So um, just happy birthday to you, ma. And I'm about to end the live, but please just um, wish her a happy birthday. Um for me, say a birthday prayer for her. We're grateful to you, Queen. 70 years. You better serve God. And you have you are just a faithful servant. And it is because of you, woman of God, that um your daughters get to be women of God, that your grandchildren get to be men and women of God, and that so many others are women of God because of you. I mean, talk about an inheritance for your children's children. I love it. Um, glory 70 young. Yes. You getting some happy birthdays, ma. We love you so, so much. I love all of y'all. Happy birthday, ma. Happy Friday, y'all. See y'all next week. Bye. I can't even say my bye. Like I say my bye. Jesus, restore my voice, Lord. Amen. Bye y'all.